They collect a special grass for these cows. So when they actually produce the milk, the milk is very, very sweet. In fact, they say that their milk is a taste of, of a lotus flower, and it's as sweet as a lotus flower. So Mother Ishwam on that day wanted to serve Krishna wonderful milk. So she was churning her, so she's churning her, you know, um, uh, her big pot, making yogurt, okay? So Krishna was hearing the churning, and he's wondering why didn't today Mother Ishwara wake me up from sleep? Because every day she used to wake up Lord Krishna with, uh, from his slumber and, and basically sing a wonderful, nice, nice songs she should compose. But that morning, she did not wake up Lord Krishna because she was absorbed in making this wonderful pot of yogurt for Krishna. So Krishna, in his baby form, he got a bit concerned, so he got up out of his sleep and then crawled onto the floor and walked towards the kitchen where his mother was standing with a churning pot and a big handle in her hand. So it is said that while she was making this uh, pot of yogurt, with the churning stick, she, the sound that she's making was that of the Mridanga. Okay, so that when, we, when we actually do some kirtan, the same sound that the Mridanga produces is the same sound as the churning rod of Mother Shoda. And her bangles that she was actually, when she was wearing bangles and ornaments, they're making the sounds of cartels. So she did not need any other Kirtan people with her. She was actually doing her own Kirtan for the Supreme Personality Godhead. Okay, so anyway, so Krishna came and tugged on her sari, and Mother Shoda, she saw, she noticed that he was there, and all of a sudden she uh, got this motherly, her motherly affection for him increased many, many fold. So what happened was that she wanted to nurse him and breastfeed him, so she started producing breast milk. So Krishna was very hungry, and he, he sat in his lap, as in this picture, and she basically fed him the breast milk. Now at that time, what was happening was that in the, in the room right next to them, or in, just right next to the shoulder, there was a big pot of milk that was uh, being boiled. And this milk was also special milk. It was from the same cows that was being used to make the yogurt. So this milk was overflowing. And Mother Shoda could see that the milk was overflowing. So what she did is she quickly put down Lord Krishna on the ground and she ran quickly to, to, to turn down the, the heat of the fire and add water to that milk. Now, the great Acharya is saying that, the, that this pastime is very, very special. Why? Because all the, all the personalities, all the paraphernalia and Krishna Mila are actually not material entities, they're actually personalities. So the pot that Mother Shoda was making the milk in, the milk that was boiling is actually a personality that wants to serve Lord Krishna. So the milk was thinking in that warm pot that I have not had the chance to serve Lord Krishna. Why? Because Mother Shoda was feeding him breast milk. So the, my milk will not go to Lord Krishna. So I might as well commit suicide. So what he decided to do, the milk personality decided to do, is that he decided to overboil and go into the fire. So before he could do that, Mother Shoda couldn't understand that the milk wanted to commit suicide by going to the fire. So she quickly ran to the pot and turned the, turned the stove down. Now here was baby Krishna. So baby Krishna, you know, all of a sudden you're feeding a baby and, and you put him down, how will he feel? So he's feeling passive anger. So he said, why did my mother all of a sudden wake me? And, you know, I got woken up, I was down, and then I, want, I was hungry, I wanted to get breastfed. Then within a few minutes, she puts me down on the ground. So he was very, very upset. Now, there's also another explanation for that pastime. So Lord Krishna, who is, who is uh, the, the Supreme Personality God, is the most powerful of all, right? But if you remember a pastime that happens, that happened earlier, when Lord Krishna was only three days old, there was a demon witch called Tutana. So she came to Vrindavan and she basically, she wanted to breastfeed Lord Krishna. But at that time, if you remember the pastime, she could not actually push away Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna, being a three-month, three-day-old baby, was was holding on to her breast so hard that she could not let go of him. And because of that, he sucked out the life here and she died. But Mother showed in contrast, when she wanted to let go of Mother Krishna, she could do that very, very easily. So if you compare Mother Shoda to Putana, who was stronger, Putana, right? Putana is a witch. She had the strength of 10,000 elephants. So she was no less than beam, she had to spend the beam, okay? But when, but when she wanted to detach Lord Krishna from her breast, she did not do so. But when Mother Shoda wanted to detach Krishna from her breast, she could do so very easily. Why? Because her love for Lord Krishna was much, much higher than that of Putana. So Lord Krishna did 
reciprocated with her, as you say in this verse, he reciprocated with his mother to allow her to perform her duty. But she did not have the strength of 10,000 elephants. So anyways, that, that, that's another understanding. So she went to the pot and, and added milk to, added water to that. And Lord Krishna was upset, so he said, I have to get some sort of food here. So he went to the other room. And when he went to the other room, he picked up uh, a little stone um, that was used to grind spices. So he picked up a stone and he hit, before he went to the other room, he hit the pot that Mother showed that was turning butter in. And there's a, there's a, a misunderstanding here. Sometimes, sometimes people, when they watch movies, they, they see that the stone is being thrown at the thing, you know, hanging from the ceiling. But that's actually a misconception. He actually threw the stone to hit the training pot that Mother Shua was making the yogurt in. Then he went to the other room and climbed on the grinding mortar and took the butter from that and fed the crows and monkeys. So what happened was that when Mother Shua came back, she noticed that the baby Krishna was not there. And but she could see that her her, her grinding mortar or the pot that she made the yogurt in had a crack in it and there was leak of yogurt coming there. And then she could see these little footprints on the ground that Lord Krishna had stepped on and he was basically feeding the monkeys. So she went to the other room and when Krishna saw her, then he became very you know, scared because she had a, a stick in her hand. So she ran after him, and we'll, we'll advance this because short time. So she ran after him into the garden and she and we know what she did is that as the Dabada Askar said, when the Lord, the Lord Krishna was small and swift, and Mother Shoda was heavy and bulky, right? She, had, she was a bulky late, uh, personality, so she could not run after Lord Krishna as quickly as Lord Krishna could run in front of her. But eventually she was able to catch up to him, and she tied him to a grinding mortar. So when she tied him to a grinding mortar, she, she got all the ropes in the garden and tried to tie him. Now it is said that Lord Krishna's waist is 12 fingers, you know, in diameter. So his waist is 12 fingers in diameter. So Mother Shoda knew that it would not take much time and effort to tie Lord Krishna. So she tried to tie Lord Krishna and then she got bewildered because, you know, a few ropes and still the rope was two fingers too short. So she got some more ropes and tied them again. And again, each time she tied that, it was always two fingers too short. For belly, that's only 12 fingers, you know, in terms of the girth. And she tried it again and again, but she did not tie him. Even more so that the gopis that were there, some of the senior gopis that were there, they could realize that Mother Yashoda was getting very frustrated, and they started laughing at her. She said that, you know, every day you can, you, you know, you, 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 you get angry and more Krishna, you do anything, but this time, he's defeating you. So, so what she, then what she did is out of frustration, she got some ribbons from her hairband and tried to tie Lord Krishna, but again, her efforts were fruitless. When Lord Krishna saw that her mother was trying as hard as possible, then he gave in. Okay, just as in this verse he says, uh, you know, as all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. So the Lord Krishna could see that Mother Yashoda's surrender for him was as much as she could offer him. And then he gave up as well, and then she let him, she, he let her time abound him. So those two fingers basically represent, the first finger represents her attempt to buy more Krishna, that is her attempt to, to serve him. And the second uh, finger represents his cause of mercy to allow her to bind him. So that's the reciprocation of the devotee and the reciprocation of the Supreme Personality God. And so that's what those two fingers represent. So anyway, so as pastime goes on, uh, she, she, she tied him to the wooden grinding mortar and then went back to her own duties. So Krishna was very upset and uh, he was tied there for the, for the remainder of the day. So what he did is that he remembered that there was another pastime that he had to perform. So the pastime goes as, is that there are these two tall twin Arjuna trees in his courtyard. So what he did is that these two trees were actually cursed by Narak Muni, right? So they were cursed by Narak Muni 15 million years ago. So what happens is that 15 million years ago, in, in the upper plants you know, where the demigods reside, there's a river, there's a, a lake called the Madakni Ganji. So there, these two sons of Kerala were having a good time with, with females. So Narak Muni happened to pass by and these two uh, drunken males did not uh, recognize the presence of this great sage. They did not pay their respects to him. So, so not everybody was very, very compassionate. You know, when, when someone is offended, then they'll usually curse them. But not everybody being a great devotee of Lord Krishna, he actually cursed them in a way that they could render service to Lord Krishna. Okay? So what happens is that he cursed them that they will be trees in the courtyard of Lord Krishna. And when Lord Krishna descends, 
Uh, 15 million years later, he will basically liberate these two trees. So he, he cursed them for 100 celestial years. So that's even 15 million years in the earthly time. So depending on which planet you are, of course. So anyways, so he cursed them, and then Lord Krishna remembered that he has to liberate these two trees. So he took his granny mortar and basically crawled between the two trees. Now these two trees are fused at the bottom. So he managed to crawl above the hump, and, and with the force, these two trees came down, and a big noise occurred, and then all the coward men our women, the gopas, gopis, they all came out to see what had happened. And uh, they, they could not imagine, you know, these two tall Arjuna trees that was as, 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 as high as some of our skyscrapers came down, crashing down on the ground by this little baby Krishna. So, so anyways, so out of these two trees came out these two personalities, Manigriva and Malikavira. So they, they circumvented Lord Krishna and basically Lord Krishna delivered them. Now, some people think that they actually went back to the to the to their own planet, but actually they stayed in Gola Vrindavan thereafter. So these two personalities of Kurera stayed in Gola Vrindavan as two devotees. Why? Because they were there in Gola Vrindavan for a long time. They were there for the time that Lord Krishna manifested Gola Vrindavan. So they saw all the pastimes that Lord Krishna was doing, and they became known as Bhakunda Kata and and uh, another name I forget right now. But but these two brothers basically. Escape the the Vrindavasis, all the castles of Lord Krishna up to that time. So they were actually delivered by Lord Krishna by serving him in Gol in 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 uh, Vrindavan. So anyway, so when Lord Krishna was bound, he was still bound to the mortar. So what happens? The Balaram came with his gopas and they tried to knot, you know, knot that to show that tie. They tried to knot that, but they couldn't do that. So even though Balaram could not open the knot of Lord Krishna. So then Nandaraj came and said, what is happening, my boy is tied. So he then easily opened the knot and let Krishna free. So the pastime goes on and on like that. But it shows that Nandaraj, being the father of Lord Krishna, was, was on, almost on the same level as Mother Shoda. Mother Shoda could tie him and only Nandaraj could untie the knot. But all the Gopas who were in the Sakya Ras could not do that because they were on a different Ras than that of Nandaraj. So only Nandaraj was in the Parental Ras, known as the Selya Ras, he was able to untie the knot and let Krishna go free. So the pastime goes on and on like that. But it basically shows that to the we reciprocate Krishna, he will reciprocate with us. So if you reciprocate with him in the, in the form of a fatherly love, then he will reciprocate with us in the form of a fatherly love. Now that's, of course, a very, very high realization, but I just want to share that pastime with you of the, of the pastime of stealing the pot of butter. Okay. So, in the month of Kartik, uh, there are many, many important festivals that occur. Um, so, for example, tomorrow is Purnima. So, in the month of Kartik, the month of Kartik always starts either on Purnima or the first day of, or the first day of the fourth month of Chitamas, or it starts on Ekadashi or Dvadasi. It, only, it can only start on those four days. So, if you look at your calendar, only those four days, the month of Kartik can start. And the last day of Kartik is also Purnima, so it can only end on those four days. So that's the point of the month of Karthik. So tomorrow, uh, all of you should take some vow. In fact, you should take some vow. You can, the vow can be to serve Lord Krishna by chanting more rounds or chanting your rounds better. So okay, there's many, many vows you can take. And, this, so, and, and so I urge you to take those vows. Now, uh, there's also, tomorrow's also a very important day because it's the disappearance day of, of Hanuman in the form of Marari Gupta. So Marari Gupta was a, is an internal associate of Lord Chaitanya Ratabhu, so when Lord Chaitanya appeared about well, 500 years ago, his entourage came with them and Hanuman came with him in the form of Marali Gupta. So Marali Gupta uh, basically was Hanuman in his previous um, in his previous incarnation. So when uh, Ramchandra and Sita, Sita uh, Lakshmana and Hanuman came, he came as Hanuman. So there's many, many pastimes about that, but basically the pastime is that Marali Gupta, when he came to the pastime of Lord Chaitanya, he could not forget that he was Hanuman. See, he was always attached to Lord Ramachandra. And oftentimes, Lord Chaitanya Ramachandra would chide him and play games with him and say that, you're actually not my devotee, you're a devotee of Lord Ramachandra. And they used to have games like that. And, and, but but Ramachandra said, no, no, you are Ramachandra, I know that. You're, this, you're no different than Lord Ramachandra. But he said, no, no, no I, I, I've come in the form of a devotee to serve, to, to serve Lord Ramachandra. So therefore, you, you cannot be my devotee. So they're having these wonderful pastimes. Now, so that's one pastime of Marai Gupta. There's many, many other pastimes. Now, on, on this Saturday, 
is the disappearance day of the orthodox top bird. So why do we recognize the orthodox top bird? Why? Because many of us budgets that we sink are picked by an orthodox top bird. For example, we, we just sank Shiguru uh, Patnavaka, the, the Guru Vandana pairs. They're actually written by an orthodox top bird in honor of his spiritual master, Lokanath uh, Das Goswami. So they're actually written for his spiritual master. When you sing Shikri San Chitanya Mahaprabhu, Shikri San Chitanya Prabhu, Doya Kara More, that budget was written by an orthodox top bird. There's a there's another one, Hari Haraya Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha. That version was written by Narayan Das Thakur. Another one known as Alino Prema, you know, the, the, the passing of a devotee, that's written by uh, Narayan Das Thakur. So many, many versions are written by Narayan Das Thakur. So he's also a special personality. Now I'll, I'll tell you one, one pastime about Narayan Das Thakur. So all these personalities I mentioned in during the month of Kartik and in other months, they always come when the Speed Lord comes. So Narayan Das Thakur was actually in his previous life, he was actually a servant of one of the gopis. Okay, he was, he was, known, he was known as the Chamaka Majari. So his job was to um, was to boil milk. Okay, just like we said, the boiling milk in Malayeshwar's house. His job was also to boil milk for Radha and Krishna. So, so every day he used to actually make milk, and and that was his his service during the lila of Radha and Krishna. Now during the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was the first one that inaugurated the first Gorpurima festival. You remember that in a, in a place in Bengal called Keturi, he was the one that actually started the Gorpurima festival 500 years ago. At that time, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Dinida had already left the planet, so they were not there physically. But during his festival, they actually came in the festival of forms, and a lot of the uh, elevated devotees saw their forms during that festival, and one of them was Lord Bell's top word. So the past that goes that when he one time when he was in his Bhajan Kutir, he was he was chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra, he went back to his pastime during the time of Lord Chaitanya during the time of Radha Krishna when he was making the milk. So what happened was that when he was making the milk, he, he forgot that the milk was boiling and the milk actually came out of the pot. So what it did is the, with the bare hands he actually grabbed the pot and, and took the pot off the off the hot fire. But what happened was that because his hands were you know, he didn't have any gloves on like we do when we make, you know, Prashad, we have these big gloves. He actually burned his hands. So when he came out of that trance and came out of his special Kutir, the people could see that his hands were burned. Now, in his special Kutir, there's no, there's no milk, there was no hot fire. But he was thinking of a pastime 5,000 years ago. So, so they understand that he actually had gone back in time and was, and, and was, was having this pastime. Now, these, these pastimes that I just mentioned, they've happened to many other devotees during the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, where they used to go back into time and, and experience the pastimes with Radha Krishna. And for example, there's one pastime where, where one of the devotees, uh, his name is Shuni Vasachari, whose actual uh, experience day also occurs in the Radha Kartik. There's a pastime where he was looking for Radha Rani's nose ring, and, and his job was to find it. So he jumped into the Yamuna River, and his uh, disciple, um, who was who was actually the disciple also during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastime, helped him find the nose ring. So what happened was that when he came out of the water, he, he got the nose ring, but when he came back in time, 5,000 years later, he had the nose ring with him. So, so they were always asking, where did you get this nose ring from? And he said that, and they, they couldn't reply, you know, because he couldn't understand that he had gone back in time and found the nose ring of Radharani. Similarly, there was another pastime of Srinivasacharya when he was actually offering uh, an arti to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was doing it in his mind. So he was offering his arti, and at the time that he was offering the garland, he offered the garland to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then when he came out of his trance of offering the arti, he noticed that there was a very fragrant um, garland on his, on his chest. And he understand that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had given it back to him, even though he had not physically done the arti. So it shows that these great personalities um, uh, manifest the pastimes in their mind, but they can be as real as, as reality itself. Now we know that on one of the sixth, uh, there's the appearance day of Radha Kund Shankund. I won't go into that story in detail. Uh, basically, we remember that there's this big demon called Rishasura, and Rishasura, as many other demons in the previous lifetimes, had offended the Guru. So Rishasura had offended in the previous last, last time. He was actually uh, a devotee of Bihaspati. So Bihaspati, is a, is, a, is a guru of all the demigods. He had actually offended him by sitting in front of him 
in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a wrong pose. So Brihaspati basically said that you'll be born as a bull. So a bull has a lot of pride, okay? So Lord so Krishna killed this bull because he wanted to smash his pride. So the Sinister Sura had come to Vrindavan down in the twilight and Krishna killed this bull. So what happened was that uh, Radha Rani told Krishna now you're contaminated. Why? Because you killed the male bull or male cow. So Krishna said, no, 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 you know, how can I be contaminated? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always pure. He said, no, 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 you have broken the codes of the Shastras and you killed a, a cow, you know, like we know the Shastra says you cannot kill the woman, you cannot kill a child, someone who is infirm, you cannot kill a patient, you know, those things like that. So, so what happened was that he actually killed the male cow, uh, or a male, a, a bull, a, a male cow. So, so rather they said you must, you know, do some sort of atonement. So, so the story goes that um, Lord Krishna said, fine, so he said, what you have to do is so you have to go to all the holy places, the three universes, and, and take bath. So Krishna was very smart. He said, why do I have to go? I'll just call them. So they all came to, 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 take, to take darshan, and basically um, a well was formed, and they basically um, filled that whole well, and that became known as Shamkund. So then Krishna went back to Radharani. She said that you've taken the side of the bull, and you're contaminated. So Radha said, how is that possible? He said, uh, you, you're contaminated because you've taken the side of Ristasura, so you must do some austerity too. She said, fine, so she got her order, go be friends, and basically, you know, dug a well with the bangles, and they got the water from Manasi Ganga. When Krishna saw that they were bringing the water from Manasi Ganga, he got, he got, you know, very worried that, you know, it was taking a long time, they were not able to fill the Radha Kund. So he invited the personality of Godhead that helped build his Kund help Radharani and the water was mixed and that and today that's not a Shankar and Radhakan. So during this day many devotees bathe at midnight and, and Radhakan and Shankar to get the same benefit as going to Golok and Dhamdam. Dham. Um, so some temples actually um, perform this wonderful ceremony on, on the sixth of um, November. There's two Akadashis during that month. Uh, the Pavali is also during that month. Govinda Puja is during that month. And we know that the Govinda Puja there's a nice Lila Basically, what we understand from Leela is that during the time that Indra showered all the rain on Govardhan Hill, it is said that not even a single drop came under the Govardhan Hill. And we know, know that this was not special rain, this is the rain when there's Pralaya, when, when there's the end of destruction. So, so the, the force of the rain of Lord Indra was so severe that it came down as sheets and pillars of water, like tsunami, one tsunami after another tsunami after another tsunami. But there's not even a single drop that came under the mountain of Gordon Hill, and not even a single tree or a, or a leaf or twig on the mountain was actually harmed by the rain of Lord Indra. Why? Because Krishna was holding Gordon Hill with his, with his pinky, and, and Gordon Hill was touched by Lord Krishna, so therefore was completely protected. And, and as you know, that Indra was bewildered, and he came down on his, on his, um, on his elephant, okay, Ravata, and he brought his cow. And, and he basically um, asked Lord Krishna for forgiveness and did Abhishek of Lord Krishna. So later that Abhishek water was known as Govinda Kund. And from that day onward, it was actually Lord Indra that gave the name to Krishna as Govinda. He says, you are actually the real Indra, I'm not Indra. And therefore, because you are a protector of the cows, the land, and the Brahmanas, by doing this Govinda Puja, which is the actual intent of Lord Krishna, he said that I will call you Govinda. Govinda. So that's how the name Govinda uh, came to Lord Krishna, uh, Lord Indra. So, so the many other pastimes, we know that the disappearance day of Shri Prabhupada also occurs during this time. Uh, there's also the pastime of killing Kamsa. Kamsa was a great demon. He was the one that sent all the demons to Vrindavan Dham. So he also got killed during the month of Kartik. Very auspicious to be, to be killed by Lord Krishna during the month of Kartik. And, uh, and also there's the disappearance day of, of Gorkhshu Das Babaji Maharaj. He was the uh, grand church master of Ashura Prabhupada. And then the last day of Mantha Karthik actually marks the marriage of Tulsi and Shagra and Shila. So, so there's many, many festivals during the month of Karthik, and I encourage you to all take uh, to, to all take a benefit of them. So in closing, because we're almost out of time, I'd just like to uh, say that during this month of Karthik, try to surrender what you can. Uh, as it says in the verse, as all surrender unto me, I will work accordingly. Everyone has to follow my path of Sadhana Prithas. So that means we all have to follow the path of Lord Krishna, but some can surrender 50%, some can surrender 100%. But if you surrender as much as you can possibly, then, then one day you will be able to hold Lord Krishna in your lap.
Jai Sushil Prabhupada. Jai Krishna.